My name is Clara Ndinda, as I said. I am a crochet artist, a content creator, and professionally a journalist. So um, basically what people know me for is my crochet artistry skills. And that is what has made people to get to know who I am and to get to understand the craft that I do. Um, my line of work, I am a crochet artist. I crochet, I make outfits for people. And my niche, because there are very many different crochet artists, but I do, I thrive in making sweaters, cardigans, and you know, just winter stuff. So that's where I thrive in. And that is what I do for, you know, a living. And that's what people know me for. Also, I'm a content creator. So once in a while, there are people who give me gigs and I go there because I have a background in journalism. I shoot and I edit and I, advertise their businesses. It makes me feel really good. It actually makes me feel proud of myself because I've always been this person who wants to do something that is unique. Very many people associate crochet to old fashioned, you know, swag the kitambo, but I try and make it look stylish so that we can merge, you know, the skill and the trends of nowadays. So even when it comes to color choice and all those things, I just try my best to model it very well because when someone sees me rocking my stuff, they're like, wow, I'd, I'd really want something like that. But if a grandma is doing it and they make it, someone will just be like, mm, nah, I'd rather go to Isili and just buy a cardigan there. I don't feel like there's a hard one. As long as you have the skill, you can maneuver and create whatever it is you want to create. It's just the workload that comes with it. So you see, for someone like me, who thrives in making sweaters and winter stuff, they take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So that's where you find many people say, hey, that is hard. But there are people who do like dresses, cover-ups, to them, that's easy. Well, you see, like I said, thanks to technology and YouTube. So when I want to create something, I just go to YouTube and I'm like, how to crochet a cardigan. And you get very many recommendations there. So once you learn how to, you know, get the skill with your creative mind, you can come up with different patterns and different ideas. Also social media. I'm not the only crochet artist. You know, there's very many crochet artists and there's actually designer crochet artists. So I follow them and I check out their work and I'm like, this will really look good. But because you don't want it to look like you copied their work, you just borrow a few things here and there because there's nothing like something new on planet Earth. You just borrow a few things here and there and then you make your own stuff. When I wake up in the morning being the only girl child in my home, house chores, you finish cleaning up everything and then once I'm done, I sit down at my desk, I write a few things here and there of what that thing will entail and will require and then I start crocheting. I just, you know, we have Wi-Fi so I just type in a movie there, I watch as I crochet. Um, I think the diversity of it and the fact that you can be creative and do a lot of different things with the craft. You don't have, there's no at one specific thing that when you do this, you have to do it like this. You can play around with different stuff. You can come up with many different ideas. And plus for me, it's therapy, you know, it, it helps me digress from social media because you know when you have nothing to do you just find yourself scrolling 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 but when i'm actually crocheting i don't i don't even use my phone so for me it helps me you know get out of that world to this other world and it helps me brainstorm a lot because i tend to become creative i think about my life i self-reflect because you know this could actually be boring because you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So it just helps you reflect and it's like a form of therapy for me. My journey as a kid, I was born in 1998. I was the only child for about seven years. And to my parents, the most important thing for them 
was me getting an education so i went to primary school and my parents ensured i had the best education i went to primary school we were staying in isili back then so i went to a primary school called saint juliet and then i finished there went to boarding school when i was in class four Gilgil Hills Academy finished there my KCPE got fairly good grades went to high school and then you know when I was there I always wanted to become a journalist and my parents have always been the people who support whatever it is we do so yeah and then went to campus Daystar University pursued my dream career finished school slapped with unemployment and I was like what next so one day I just saw my mom crochet something and I got really interested. So I forced her to show me. And when I want to do something, I will do it there and then. She was like, I'm gonna teach you tomorrow. I was like, no, teach me now. So she had to teach me there and then. She taught me how to hold a crochet hook and how to make the first few chains. I wasn't really perfect at it, but that's where the interest grew from. No, me growing up, I knew I was gonna be the face of TV. I knew I was, you know, I was gonna be this huge Catherine Casavulli, you know? I always looked up to Catherine Casavulli and I was like, one day I'm gonna be on these screens because it's something I knew my parents really wanted. And you know the pride of a parent, they're like, gonna join your name Toto Angus. <laughs> I never thought I was gonna be in fashion, never. Even when I was in campus, never. Okay, I didn't really tell them I'm not gonna be on TV, I'll be doing crochet because sometimes I do practice my career, but it's just that I don't really have a solid job. So being a content creator, I felt like, you know, the content creation space is saturated because everyone wants to do travel, lifestyle, get ready with me and whatever. And I was like, since I have this crochet skill, let me content create in crochet because not very many people do that. So when I started doing that and my first video went viral, I got like 1 million, 1.5 million views. I was like, you know what? Not bad. If I keep doing this, it's gonna take me somewhere. So when I told them, as usual, like I told you, my parents are very supportive people. They let you do what you want to do. And once you figure out, if you feel like it's not working for you, they won't bash you, they'll just tell you, you know what, it's okay. You can, just like you said, it's never too late. You can go back and do this. Well, I have two amazing brothers. Um, I have one who's 18 years old and the other one is 13 years old. So the 13 year old one is kind of shy. So he's still in school. He doesn't like the camera at all. But when it comes to crochet, you know, sometimes I need a male model. And my brother is very, you know, he looks good, you know, yeah. So he's my model. We do the modeling together. And people, people think he's my boyfriend, but he's not my boyfriend, you know. He makes the stuff look good. The way he rocks them, they look really good. And that's how, I've inspired him when it comes to crochet. It's important to have parent support because it boosts your confidence, even in whatever it is you're doing, because you know, his, your parents, either your mom or your dad, none of them is going to be telling you, unajua so-and-so is doing this, 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 and this, you'd be here and here and here. It boosts confidence and it also gives you the motivation to keep moving and going forward. So you see, for example, like a person like me, I don't have a, a solid job, so I don't have a salary. My parents, in how they support me, they haven't kicked me out. They let me do whatever it is I want to do. And, you know, even sometimes my mom appears in my videos because she's the one who taught me how to crochet. We do like mom, daughter, you know, things like that. And they really make you feel good and supported and you grow. Yeah, you even inspire other parents out there to do these things with their children. So one of my greatest highlights is when my videos went viral on TikTok, doing whatever it is I do, which is crochet. And it made me feel really good. And I'm gonna be telling you more about that after the short commercial break.
As I mentioned, one of my greatest highlights was when one of my videos went viral. So I had been on TikTok for a while, but I had never posted anything about crochet. I had recorded the video, but you know, the other things that I used to post, I used to get 20 views, 13 views. I actually had 169 followers, I'll never forget. So one day, my auntie was coming from abroad and I went to pick her from the airport. I remember that morning I just decided, you know what, let me just post this video and just log off and just go offline. If I get 20 views, well and good, I mean it's my work. So I posted, I just went offline, I didn't even expect much from it. Went, met my auntie, you know, because it's been a long time before we, meet, we met, I didn't really have time to look at my phone. So at night, when I just went online, my phone was buzzing, 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 buzzing. And it was a sweater I had made. It was a pull neck sweater. And it was the first sweater I had ever tried making. So that day, remember I had 169 followers. I got 10,000 followers. You know that pride you feel? And the comments there are like, wow, great job. You're doing so nice. Where can I get this? I started getting inquiries. I was used to making beanies, scarves. And that's it so i decided let me try and make a sweater and when i did it i recorded bits and bits of it but i never even bothered posting it i just edited it posted it on my status my mom tell me oh you're doing so good congratulations my friends will tell me oh you're doing so good so when i posted it for the whole week my, my phone was just buzzing 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 you go offline you come back you have another 10,000 followers you go offline you come back you find you have i don't know 100,000 views so that was my first highlight and it made me you know that confirmation that you need to tell you that you're actually doing the right thing that's what that's the video that actually made me feel good so that video in a span of one week i had like 1.5 million views and then you see my auntie and her family were coming so they were also stalking me on tiktok i hadn't even realized my video had gone viral and it had over a million views my auntie's husband is the one who was telling my parents do you know your daughter is famous do you know what, what, what? so that was my greatest highlight and then i decided to do more of those you know consistency and my videos started doing well doing well and then i decided now to challenge myself because I was doing pull necks, just sweaters. And now I did a cardigan, like a long cardigan. That one as well, viral, 1.5 million views. People kept asking me, people kept asking me, people kept asking me and I was like, yeah, I think I'm doing the right thing. So that was my greatest highlight. And also, you know, when you rock your stuff, because many people don't understand the value in it and i'm the type of person i won't sell something to you because i'm desperate for money so it's like let me just wear my stuff you wear your stuff in town everyone's turning heads to look at you and i'm like yeah i think i'm doing the right thing so that that was my greatest highlight and then you know people who had seen me on social media they could tell when i was in town because i had this bright colored sweaters luminous green luminous pink and thank God it was a cold season. So I used to rock my stuff. You just walk in town, so I was like, oh my gosh, Cla is that you? I like your stuff. Yeah, so that was my greatest highlight. Oh, um, I graduated from Desta University, you know, with a degree. I think I'm the first one in my family to graduate with a degree it made my parents very happy you know your parents joy is also your joy so yeah that was another highlight of mine um one of the biggest lessons i've learned in life is that life moves on you know whether you're sad, whether you're depressed, whether you're whatever, you know, whether you lose a loved one, life always moves on. And it just doesn't move on for other people, even to you, it has to move on. So that is what I have learned in life. And it gives me a reality check when I tend to feel, you know, like I'm low. I ask myself, you know, because life has to move on. 
should I choose to move on when I'm happy or should I choose to move on when I'm sad? And the answer is simple, happy. So you just move on, even though there's challenges here and there, life moves on and you have to move with it. Otherwise you'll be stuck there and you're the one who'll be feeling miserable. Every morning when I wake up or when I'm feeling some type of way, I, I always tell myself, I am a very happy, healthy, wealthy, and very successful and hot woman. <laughs> I am a money magnet and money is attracted to me. I attract all, all things that are good and abundance is my portion. The more I receive, the more I give, and the more I give, the more I receive. I try and do my research. A lot of the times I do my research and I always try to come up with new things. So, because very many people look up to me in the crochet game. So I just can't do, let's say I do a certain sweater today and people see it. Most of them are going to make the same exact sweater. So I feel like, you know, I have a responsibility to come up with new stuff all the time because it's more of inspiring other crochet artists. So I do a lot of research. I go onto YouTube, I just search how to crochet something and you find very many, sorry, you find very many people have very many different designs and very many different ways to do their things. I also go on Pinterest. Pinterest should, if you do anything creative, you should have Pinterest. Pinterest has a lot of unique things so if I go on Pinterest and I see something and maybe it looks complicated to do, then there I go and search maybe on YouTube how to crochet this and this pattern. And once I learn it, I transform it into my own idea. I've always had this dream of being this big entrepreneur when it comes to crochet so even when you stalk me on instagram you will see a certain post i wrote there one day i'm going to have the biggest designer crochet shop for sweaters because for me i mainly do sweaters and cardigans so i'm manifesting that and you know baby steps here and there i'm gonna get there Millennials go wrong in the pursuit of their dreams when they have self-doubt and, you know, um, imposter syndrome. I also struggle with that a lot. Sometimes I'd create something, the whole world looks at it as beautiful, but I'm like, if I work harder, this thing could have looked even better. So self-doubt and, you know, just telling yourself I'm not good enough. People should actually believe in themselves and just do whatever it is you have to do without thinking about a lot of different stuff and you know the voices in your head that are telling you no, you can't do this you can't do this for example personally I used to struggle doing videos because I kind of felt like I have a huge forehead but I was like <laughs> anyway I'm joking <laughs> but you see for for someone like me, I wear glasses and you find, because I'm using a ring light, the reflection. So most of the time I'm like, I can't do content creation because of this thing. And you'd find I'm missing out on a lot because of this one small thing. And it's something that you can just do. And maybe even people don't even notice. So people should just stop having self-doubt. Do whatever it is you have to do and start with where you are and with whatever it is you have. Just do it. I have very many young people who are actually looking up to me. I get that a lot in my comments. And you find parents, some of them are like, you know, there, my daughter looks up to you, my daughter likes you. So I just want to tell them, you know, especially when it comes to this craft that we do, you have to be patient and practice Practice, practice. Even for me to get to where I am right now, I had to practice and put a lot of work. You know, you just don't wake up and decide to make a sweater. When you start with crochet, you'll have to start with the most basic things. 
you'll start with a scarf you go wrong with your scarves until you perfect that then now you can go to the next step you can go to the next level you know when people just look at whatever it is you do they're like easy because sometimes when i go to some of my students because i tutor someone thinks it's easy and when you tell them okay here's the crochet hook they give up they give up on the first lesson so i just tell people you know practice and be patient I would like to tell the people out there to have grace, especially on crochet artists, because I'm not the only one. And for people who are trying to have to create businesses of crochet, please, this thing is not as easy as you think it is. So when a crochet artist tells you, I am charging this for this, even if you're bargaining, be realistic. Don't bargain. If someone tells you it's 10,000, don't tell them I have 2K, surely. It doesn't mean, because it's not just the material. It has time. It has effort. It has hours put into it. So have grace when it comes to crochet artists. Handmade stuff has never been cheap. It's expensive. And you want something that is unique to just yourself. So have grace when it comes to, you know, getting things from crochet artists. I'm talking on behalf of all my crochet artists. I have a community of crochet artists. And I do know this is something that we all struggle with. In my group, everyone is always asking, you know, a client has asked me to make this for them. And someone has this complicated design. You even wonder how can someone do this? And someone wants to pay you peanuts. You know, so when you're buying crochet stuff because it is handmade stuff, please pay for it. We also feel appreciated and we feel like our craft is appreciated. And also, as you go about your day, just be kind. You never know what the next person is going through. Just be a kind human being. Yeah. Anyway, my social media handles, my name is Ndinda, that is N-D-E-E-N-D-A-H on TikTok, on Instagram, and on Facebook, I have my official names, Clara Ndinda. <laughs>